What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Guna channel. And tomorrow at 8 o'clock, we finally get a chance to avenge that 1 0 defeat at St. James's Park, our first defeat of the season. Famous now for that VAR debacle. Look, I don't know if you think that the ball stayed in or if there was a foul on Gabriel or if there was an offside or a handball or any of the other reasons that goal might have been struck off and wasn't. That's a fat lane. Yeah, but that's a fat lane. It's really that like... Mm. Mm. But it was really Bruno Gimaraes' forearm smash to Jorginho that made me so angry. And the outburst that Arteta had after that game, which nearly saw him punished by the FA, but in the end, he hadn't actually done anything wrong. And I want to say also, since he came out and gave the post-match interview he did, where he called it a disgrace, it's not clear what he was calling a disgrace, but we have seen far fewer VAR incidents. And thankfully, VAR is not something we talk about every week anymore. And although nobody is really enjoying VAR for the amount of time it takes to make decisions, at least we haven't seen the kind of catastrophic decisions that we saw when Spurs played Liverpool and we played Newcastle. That game at St James's Park, though, really boiled my blood for different reasons. It was the fans afterwards talking about how Arsenal hadn't created enough chances, completely forgetting that they were the home side and only had two shots on target themselves. The game really should have been a draw, but the fact that we lost it was hugely galling. And even as the final whistle blew, I could not wait for this return match because it is likely to be a completely different scenario. Since beating us on that day, they lost away to Bournemouth, then they battered Chelsea and managed to defeat Manchester United. But in the dying minutes of beating Manchester United, they lost Nick Pope. And I think this is really important for all the critics of Arteta bringing in David Rea. He said at the time, look, you don't want to have any part of your team without a suitable backup. And if there's anything that proves that, it's the fact that since they lost Nick Pope and started playing 35-year-old Dubravka in goal, they have shipped 27 goals in the last 12 games. Just let that sink in for a minute. They've scored 23 and conceded 27. They've only kept two clean sheets in that time and both of those were to Fulham home and away. So coming to the Emirates tomorrow, this is a team that is leaking goals. And even last week when they played Bournemouth at home, it took them 93rd minute to score an equaliser to make the game 2-2. So I don't think that the Newcastle team that we're up against tomorrow is anything like the team of last season or even the one that we played on that day. And they do have some very key players out. Isaac is out, Joel Linton is out, Fabian Scher is out and Callum Wilson is out. So their front line Although they have been scoring goals, they have been scoring them against teams without our defensive record. So really on paper, it looks like we will get the revenge we deserve. Of course, the away defeat to Porto stings and may have had an effect on the players' confidence. And of course, we have had far less time to recover from that Porto game than Newcastle have had from their 2-2 draw with Bournemouth. But you have to say we're strong favourites here. For tomorrow's game, they're going to be without Callum Wilson, Isaac, Fabian Shah and Joel Linton. A, a side beset by injuries. In fact, injuries, you could say, have totally ruined their season. We've had our own injuries, but the picture is looking a lot bright for us. It's looking like we are getting back to some kind of full strength. Fabio Vieira was on the bench. But it's also good news, apparently Thomas Partey is in contention, although unlikely to play any major part tomorrow. Gabby Jesus and Sinchenko might be fit. At least you could say our bench is likely to be looking better. For the game itself, I imagine we'll start David Rea in goal. I don't think you can really blame him for that last gasp winner at Porto. His positioning, people say, but I think that's after the event. I would expect him to start. He's looked better and better. And if you don't feel like uh, he's any better than Ramsdale, at least be grateful that the drop-off from our number one keeper is not quite the drop-off that Newcastle have experienced, which has seen them ship goals. The back four Arsenal picks itself at the moment because we don't have the depth. But if Zinchenko is fit, could he come in for Kivior? who, despite having looked a bit better in the game against Burnley, you know, 
he didn't have a good night against Porto. Not saying any of them did, but I would feel much better if we had Zinchenko in there inverting rather than Ben White. I think Zinchenko gets a hell of a lot of stick for not being able to defend, but he has been part of the meanest defence in the Premier League. So if possible, I'd love to see him starting, but at least having him on the bench would be uh, positive. So the back four is likely to be without Zinchenko, Ben White, Kivior, Saliba and Gabriel. In midfield, is this not a perfect game to bring back Jorginho? Our one-touch passing is so much better with him. And in that defensive midfield position, controlling the game and controlling the tempo, keeping us calm, that older head, more experienced head that I think we really missed against Porto, particularly how savvy he is in gameplay. I would like to see Jorginho start. I'd like to see Declan Rice further forward and Odegaard alongside him. Up front, Saka is absolutely going to be double teamed because we saw that last time we played Newcastle they started off one-on-one -on -one and Dan Byrne was getting rinsed so they doubled up on him which should in theory leave more space for Martinelli I'd like to see Martinelli running into space to get the ball rather than coming deep picking up the ball and trying to run with it because he gave the ball away 27 times against Porto and looked a shadow of his normal self hopefully we can see him bounce back it's very unusual for him to have two bad games in a row Saka is going to be hugely important, if for no other reason than to occupy most of their defence. And in between those two, I really think this is a Kai Havertz game. He kept his calm really well and ruffled a few feathers, to say the least, in the Newcastle game. And I think this is a kind of game set up for him. But if we have Jesus on the bench, that's encouraging because it's clear that Arteta doesn't rate Eddie Nketiah or Rhys Nelson. So... My prediction for the game tomorrow is a 3-1 win for Arsenal. I know that every game at the moment is being scrutinised for potential points that you could drop. And I do have to say this, and I'm saying it every single game, but that's what a title run-in is. This is a must-win game. It's a must-win game because just before we play Man City travel to Bournemouth, it's not inconceivable to me that that game could be a draw which puts even more emphasis on the importance of winning this game, particularly with Liverpool out of action after their midweek turnaround against Luton, playing Chelsea in the League Cup on Sunday. A really important match for us to make it two points off the top. If we don't get three points against Newcastle, then, and if, say, the worst happened, there was another smash and grab and we have a hangover from the midweek and we haven't rested properly, then do feel you have to look at this season as ebbing away from us a little bit and it's all going to matter so much more how we do against Porto in the second leg which I'm still confident about let me know in the comments what you think the result's going to be tomorrow how you feel we should line up I'm really looking forward to it because I want to see the smile wiped off Bruno Guimaraes's face so it's a must win in order to stay in contention in the Premier League it's a must win to get revenge against a team that really didn't deserve to beat us at St James's Park and it's a must win because I want to see Bruno Guimaraes traping off that field crestfallen. I would love to see us smash some goals past these and they are there for the taking. I want to see Arteta's positive mood after the Porto match in press conferences and Declan Rice's positive post-match interview really bear fruit. I want to see what they're talking about, which is that we are upbeat and positive. And our form in the Premier League in 2024 has been outstanding and I would dearly love it to continue. Let me know in the comments how you feel, whether you think my team selection is on or off point. Once again, as I say in the end of every video, thank you so much for subscribing, for hitting that like button and for all of the comments. I reply to every single one. So until tomorrow, after the game, be lucky. Lots of love.